and a very warm welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you here on the Memory Lane 80s show this evening because we have a very special guest for you. Oh yes, Nick Hershaw is joining us on the show this evening and we'll be catching up with him after this. Nick, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? It's lovely to be here, Hayley. I'm good, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. And what have you been up to? I know, obviously, uh, we're on lockdown. What's been going on your end? Um, I've had a pretty lazy lockdown, to be honest. I've um, mowed, oh, nice. a few, mowed a few lawns. Um, yeah, and hung out with uh, my family quite a lot, as you yeah. as you do. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I tried to get creative at one point, but then homeschool kicked in and that that blew that out of the water um, it's tough isn't it it is yeah but you know we're, I'm, I'm very lucky where i am it's a, it's a lovely area and we've got a nice big house a nice big garden and, and loads of dog walks yeah. and stuff so excellent it's, stuff it's been all right well i know you have got creative because we're going to talk about your new album uh, which we're going to touch on later on in the show uh, but the first song we're going to play out uh is i won't let the sun go down on me now this was first released in 1983 yeah. but then re-released in 1984 and became your highest charting hit in the uk didn't it it did it got to the dizzy heights of number two in 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 the i think it was the july of 84 yeah Mm. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Well, we're going to check out the video to this and Nick and I will be talking in just a couple of minutes. See you then. Now, you first came onto the scene in 1984. So let's rewind. How did it all start for you? Because was it right that you were kind of singing at weddings and functions? Yeah, I, I had a bit of an apprenticeship. I, I worked for about three years in a well, it was a jazz fusion band, but we couldn't earn money doing that. So we, we yeah, we did everything, bar mitzvahs, weddings, yeah. you know, playing everything from like Cole Porter to the Birdie song. So it was good, good training for a guitar player. Yeah. yeah. And did you have any idea of just the success that you would have? I mean, I guess it's hard to tell, isn't it? But did you have an inkling? I had, yeah, I kind of, I was driven in that direction. I was, that was what I wanted to do ever since I was about 15 years old. So... I kind of, but I, you know, I just kind of ended up where I ended up playing in this band, which is great. I enjoyed, you know, that whole process, but it wasn't until that band split up in 82 that I was kind of forced into doing something about it and, and writing some yeah. songs and going looking for a record deal. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Well, we're going to play out the next song, uh, Dancing Girls. Uh, now, this is a fantastic video, isn't it? Yeah. I, what I remember. Yeah. It's all a bit blurry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it was one of those, yeah, when they say, it, we, we, it's just a one day shoot, they said, and it was one day, you know, 20, oh, right. 24 hours. So wow. they, they, they're all, they all turned out like that, but no, it was, they were good fun. Uh, yeah, they, they look really good fun. Well, let's check out the video. Here it is, uh, number 13 in 1984. See you soon. Now, Nick, you stepped out uh, of the limelight to concentrate on writing and producing. Now, you wrote the one and only for Chesney Hawks. But am I right in saying that you had written it years before and then it was only a couple of years later that you gave it to Chesney? Is that right? Yeah, I wrote it in 89 um, when I decided to sort of take a bit of a back seat. And it was pretty much the first one out of the bag. So that, yeah, I recorded it, stuck it on a shelf and forgot about it for about two years. <sighs> Yeah. And do you ever kind of just like write songs and just think, actually, that's so good. I think I'm going to keep that for myself because I think that's what I would do. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, not at the time, certainly, because, I, I, you know, if I'd have released that song at that time, that, you know, that I was just in the wrong place to do that. It wouldn't it wouldn't have had the same kind of effect that, that it did with a new artist like Chez um, releasing yeah. it. So I wasn't no, I wasn't never at any point did I think I was going to record that song. Right, right. Well, it is an absolute classic. I did say to Chesney when he came on the show that it is my karaoke song. Okay. And he actually said it's actually a hard song to sing. But um, I, I'm absolutely rubbish, Nick. It's, he, not, it's not good by any means. Did, yeah. did he tell you about the time when he actually did karaoke in some bar in Spain, I think it was? And then, oh, and no, he didn't. Was, yeah, tell it was me a, more. It was a karaoke for, for, a, for some kind of prize or something. And he came second as Chesney Hawks. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Uh, well, you are a phenomenal uh, songwriter. Let's go back to that. I mean, Elton John uh, described you as one of the greatest songwriters of a generation. Yeah. I mean, you recorded a duet with him, didn't you? What was that like? 
I did, yeah. He gave me. I've kind of stopped recording, and I got this random phone call out of, out of, out of the blue in about '93, I think it was. And just asked me if I got any songs, which is wow. quite a thing coming from Elton. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, so I just wrote one. I wrote two, and 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 sent them to him. And this is a matter of like two or three days. And fortunately, like one of them, we ended up in uh, Metropolis Studios recording a duet Done. together which was which is wow. bizarre and wonderful yeah, yeah yeah and was it right the first song that you ever bought uh was your song by Alton it was that is the absolute Yay. truth yeah first record done my I research there Nick oh, well done <laughs> Thank you. And then let's go into your next song, uh, The Riddle. Uh, I think we all want to know, how did this song come about? Right, this is this is quite well known nowadays, but um, <clears throat> what happened was my producer came to the, the house just before my the, the, I started recording the second album. I had like, I literally had two weeks to write the second album. And I did, I, he, he didn't think I had a single, so he went away and I, just, I was a bit incensed. And I, I went upstairs and I just wrote the tune to the riddle in about 10 minutes. Um, God. But I take ages to write lyrics, so I just put this nonsense right. down just because it, 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 the meter was right and it, the, you know, it was a rhyming scheme and it all sounded all right. So I just put that down just to demonstrate the song. And we went to the studio the next, the next week and I put that down as a guide vocal um, and it never got changed, basically. God. So that, and it ended wow. up as the nonsense. And I just thought, well, yeah. let's call it the riddle and people will actually think that it's about something. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Well, let's check out the video to it. It was number three in 1984. Enjoy. Now, Nick, you were 27 when you performed at Live Aid. Now, the estimated audience was 1.9 billion. That must have been completely surreal for you. Yeah, it's gone down. I thought it was two, but there you go. Oh, okay. That's fair enough. Maybe you're right, Nick. That's, that's all right. Yeah, it was an amazing day. I, You know, I've got sort of various memories from it I, I remember getting t getting to Wembley via helicopter because they were too afraid that it was all going to be jammed up um, at, at the stadium um, and arriving at the the conference centre I'm walking over to the to the stadium to, to, to have a to have a meet and greet with Charles and Di oh, wow. S sitting in the royal box waiting for, uh, you know waiting for Charles and Di to leave so I could get up and and go to um, get ready for, for my part uh, having a chat with Sting before he went on about his album um, Dream of Blue Turtles, standing on the side of the stage, absolutely terrified. Um, wow, I was going to say, is it right that you actually forgot your words? Have I got that right? <laughs> you have got that right. I did. I, I thought, and it was all going so well. And I got, I, I was sort of get, getting to the stage of the gig. I thought, I've got away with this. I've done it. This is brilliant. Amazing. Oh, no, I don't know the words to the second half of this verse, do I? <sighs> And it didn't oh, come no. to me, and I just kind of I ended up singing the second half of the first verse again, which I and I bet no one noticed. Did well, they? I didn't. I mean, I've I, I I I I've been sort of waking up in a cold sweat ever since, and, and until I kind of I stole myself to actually watch it again when the DVD <laughs> came out to see if I could see the fear in my eyes at that specific point, oh. and I couldn't. So there you go. Oh, I good. was the only one actually knowing anything was wrong. True professional. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're going to go into your next song, uh, Wouldn't It Be Good. Uh, now, Simon, one of yep. our viewers says, can you tell us about the making of this video? I mean, it's quite a futuristic video, isn't it? Yeah, it was It was a long one. It was filmed um, in some dis, dis sort of derelict buildings just outside Buckingham Palace. If you can imagine there were derelict buildings just outside Buckingham Palace, just over the road it was. Um, and we... Basically, the suit I had was made out of this stuff called... Well, it was a calico suit, but there was just tape stuck all over it. it was I like the Scotch suit. Light. Yeah, it's called Scotch Light. Have you still light. got the suit? <laughs> Alas, no. You'd think it would come in handy, wouldn't you? But, I mean, they've got, yeah. you know... They didn't They didn't have green screen in those days, cause it, so it was kind of a, a green, a, the equivalent of a green screen suit. But it kept falling to bits all the way through it, and they kept sticking me back <laughs> together again. And it finished in the early hours somewhere in a in a... In an uh, with, with satellite dishes and um and telescopes just outside Cambridge somewhere I think it was in yeah yeah and sort of like four o'clock five o'clock in the morning it was it was wow. wild yeah I bet well it's a great video let's check it out number four in 1984 see you after. <laughs> 
Now, Nick, we have got some questions from some of our viewers. Right. Andy would like to know, how many musical instruments do you play? Um, what actually play? Not very many. I'm a guitar player, really. I can, I can, I, I, I'm all my keyboards I do via computer. So I type, I type my compu my keyboards. I can't really play them. Um, I, but I get a tune out of sort of most things. I think. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Some kind of tune. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I can just about play the recorder and mm. I can't even do that. So I'll just give up now. Uh, anyway, Jane says, um, stuff has the most brilliant lyrics. Are you the person who has to have all the latest gadgets or do you hate all the stuff we have to have now? No, I love, I am a gadget man. I'm, I am Inspector oh. Gadget. Yeah, I do. I do love a gadget, but, but, and, but it's, which is really bad for me because I get infuriated when they go wrong. And they do go wrong yeah. all the time. They do. And I'm, they the, do. The amount of, in, in my studio, I've got you know all the all the tech and all the gear, but um, it's just a nightmare when it goes wrong. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. But there you I go. I know the feeling. It's my own fault. Ah, <laughs> well, let's play uh, out Human Racing now. This was number nineteen in nineteen eighty four, and Nick and I look forward to seeing you soon. Let's talk about your new album, Oxymoron. First of all, I love the name. Yeah. That's fantastic. And um, also I was listening to this and it's uh, more of a sort of personal album, isn't it, to you than ones in uh, recent years? Yeah, I guess I think I have since, you know, back in the day I spent most of my time not writing about myself because I had terrible imposter syndrome and I was afraid of getting found out, I think. Oh. So I am... Yeah, but it's and then I discovered and sort of when I started making records again in in ninety nine that it's actually a lot easier to write about yourself and what you know and your own personal experiences. So yeah, go. and how else would you say it differs from your albums in the eighties? It just I don't know. It just I try not to look back. I just try and get on with yeah. it, and and it, it just sounds like it sounds really. As there was no kind of major plan with this album. It was just a. It just took a long time. And it's kind of just 16 songs that just ended up, you know, getting getting through the, the assault course that I put songs through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my favourite song from the album is uh, from Cloudy Bay to Malibu, which is number two okay. currently on the Heritage Charts. There you go. Woo! And uh, we also played out on That Was Then, This Is Now. Um, we're going to play out uh, The Wind Will Blow. Is this a video you made in lockdown? Is that right? Yeah, I literally bought myself a decent camera. Uh, this camera and and i i locked myself in me me cellar this is the bunker i i'm i'm, I'm sitting out the uh, zombie apocalypse in down here so um yeah i literally just sort of stuck a camera in, and and jumped about and made a, an idiot of myself and and yeah. edited it all together and it was just lots of fun doing it myself we're going to put details on the screen below of how you can get hold of the album and uh, let's play out The Wind Will Blow and we'll see you soon. Check it out, look at what's going on out there It's chilly and choppy and checking it down we're locking in, checking out, traveling nowhere. Cause I think we might sink and I think we might drown. Oh, I'm so thankful we're safe and we're sound inside. So why would we go and give it up for the This suffer in silence I'm blowing up Our our trouble, our strife We're free of those suckers And, and tyrants Where is our one? 
wonderful, beautiful life. show thank you so much thank you darling it's been good oh good stuff well remember we need to get hold of your album oxymoron again we're going to put details on the screen below of how you can get hold of that uh, but nick kershaw it has been such an honor and a delight it's nick kershaw everyone thank you Oh, we've now come to the end of the show. But a huge thank you to the brilliant Nick Kershaw for being such a fantastic guest. What an honour to have him here tonight with us. And a huge thank you to you at home for tuning in every single week and supporting the show. It really is very much appreciated. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. Remember, if you haven't got in contact, why not? Please do. Details are on the screen below. I'm Hayley Palmer. I'm going to leave you with some more Nick Kershaw and I'll see you then.